Many of you will have seen or uh, be familiar with the, the Hoberman sphere, uh, this expanding thing. So this is an example of an auxetic mechanism. An auxetic mechanism, when you pull on it, it gets bigger in all directions rather than just one. Um, uh, Hoberman was not the first to come up with these kinds of things. Um, they go back at least to, oh, this is tricky, here we go. They go back at least to uh, Buckminster Fuller. This is his um, a jitterbug, and you can see the same sort of thing. It expands in all directions when you pull it. Um, this has more degrees of freedom than the, uh, the Hoberman sphere, as you can see. Uh, all of the other things we're going to talk about have one degree of freedom. Um, so here are some other sort of planar examples of this. Hopefully this is visible, um, but I can't see because they've changed. Oh, there we go. So there's uh, uh, this is called the, the diamond plate mechanism, and here's another example of the Kagame mechanism. And so these are, I'm going to say these are all two-dimensional mechanisms. Um, so the, the two planar ones I showed you are obviously two-dimensional. Um, this is, I mean, it's a three-dimensional shape, but it's acting over the surface of a sphere, right? So we're going to say this is still really a two-dimensional mechanism, and we're really interested in three-dimensional mechanisms that somehow transfer force in all three dimensions. So how do you do that? Right, so our first take at doing uh, this is that we're going to take um, the Kagame mechanism and double it up. So here I have two triangles, and they're hinged in the center. So the basic mechanism we're going to do is I'm going to attach a scissor linkage to either side of that, and I end up with this here. So as the triangles rotate past each other, the edges get longer. So I'm taking rotation in the plane and extending it out of the plane. So the first thing we can do with that is take the Kagame mechanism. So this is uh, a planar Kagame mechanism, sorry, a planar Kagame mechanism in this direction. And then as I actuate it, it's going to get longer. So this is somewhat unsatisfying because I've got just a planar mechanism and I'm making it taller. So what about something that's fully 3D? So I can take exactly the same set of parts and make um, our version of the jitterbug. So this is our octahedron. So here would be one triangle on top. Um, and this would correspond to the yellow triangle right here in our jitterbug. And as I actuate it, so let's keep your eye on this triangle, that triangle stays a triangle, and I've opened up a square on the side. So this is going to be a cube octahedron. So what I can do is I can now take the um, regular uh, tiling of space by uh, tetrahedra and octahedra and um, basically tile out these jitterbugs. And I end up with this mechanism here. And so this expands quite a lot. And um, this in the center uh, would have been shrunk to a point in, um, in the ideal case. So the second sort of scheme that we had for making these things is based on uh, the scissor linkage. You sometimes see these in cherry pickers, or um, maybe you put a boxing glove on the end of this so you can punch people at a distance. <laughs> so, uh, so the idea is to, is to sort of double this up. So we call this a branched uh, uh, scissor mechanism. So if you take two copies of this uh, and do this, then you get this sort of longer thing, uh, which is a little bit more stable for your uh, punching activities. Um, so, so here's the first thing we can do with this. So, th so this has uh, four uh, arms, because we doubled up from two. This one has uh, only three, but it works just as well. And if you put four of them together, you get this object, which converts from a uh, tetrahedron into a sort of caltrop and lets you punch three people at the same time. Um, so if you, if you go back to the, uh, the four-way thing, so, so this sort of doubling up lets you turn corners. Uh, this is probably going to be too big to do on this, but this goes from a sort of cube into a larger cube. Um, so you can tile space outwards as big as you want. Um, and I'm running out of space on the table. Um, other things in this, in this vein, so this is another uh, version. This is based on the uh, um, NBO lattice. So this is uh, the molecular structure of niobium oxide. And you can do a similar sort of Google expansion. Uh, we've also played with, uh, this is based on the rhombic dodecahedron doesn't actually do exactly what we want, but it's kind of fun. So you, can, you, so you can tell this doesn't have one degree of freedom. You can squidge it about, but it was still cool, so we went with it. Um, and the last uh, thing, the, the newest addition to 
uh, getting these things to work is to add springs. Hopefully you can see there's a spring on this that will make it go on its own like this. Whoops. No, no. Let me try that again without hitting anything because I've got 44 seconds. All right. There we go. All right. Thank you.